Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox and Thank You Economy Book and MemoryDealers.com. Hey everybody and welcome to the Bitcoin Show. I'm Bruce Wagner, as I'm sure you know. Um, today we have a uh, very interesting new Bitcoin venture represented and uh, my, it's called Feed the Birds. My guests are Ira Miller and Eric Voorhees, um, co-founders, right, of Feed the Birds. Welcome guys. Hey, how you doing? Thanks so, for having us, Bruce. Sure. So, um, Ira, you're in Denver? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And Ira, if you don't know, uh, if you don't already know, is uh, involved in many little entrepreneurial ventures and small and large. Uh, Bit Munchies is the the first major one, and BT Cinch, and a couple other little. Sp- you got a lot of projects going on, don't you? Yeah. Well, there's uh, a lot to be done in the Bitcoin world. <laughs> and Eric, where are you joining us from? Uh, I'm in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, but um, I'm from Colorado originally. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So Did, but you guys actually, didn't meet in Colorado. No, it's just a coincidence. You, I met him at the uh, New York Bitcoin conference the, a couple months ago. The Bitcoin uh, conference in, the, in, in that World very Expo. office where you are. Yeah. Oh, right here uh, in the office. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Great. Um, so, how, when did this idea of Feed the Birds come about? Who came up with the idea? And when? Um, I came up with the idea, I think it was about a month ago, and um, I, uh, I'm not really a huge Twitter person, but like, you know, I use it occasionally and I have a couple, I have like a hundred followers, um, but obviously Twitter has sort of taken over the world in the same way that Facebook did uh, a few years ago, and um, it's, it's just very fast and quick and obviously catching on, it has a few hundred million users, and uh, so it just, some, something clicked and I... I realized that you know people um, people advertise through Twitter and there's various ways of doing it, but none of them are very efficient. And uh, combining Bitcoin and Twitter uh, works really nicely. So um, when I when I figured it out, I I have absolutely no development experience, so I, I don't know how to code anything. So I went to um, to Ira because I knew that he was very skilled at this stuff, and and he just uh, he liked the idea too, and so he busted it out in a couple of weeks of development and um, so now it's it's released in an open beta and uh, it's less than a month after I think I contacted him about it. Mm-hmm. Okay so and now the idea behind it's it's feed the birds uh, or z birds feed f-e-e-d z-e birds dot com and the idea behind it is uh, basically paid ad tweets so if you're Twitter you only have a hundred followers. I mean, don't you get more than that when you create a free account? Well, anyway, no, I'm just teasing. But, <laughs> but no, when you when you have a if you have, I have a few more after today. <laughs> I know, I'm just teasing. What is it? At Eric Voorhees. Yeah, at Eric Voorhees. Oh, there you go. So you just got ten thousand followers right there. So, uh, <laughs> but but anyway, but the idea is, and I've seen this before um, a while back, where you know if you have lots and lots of followers, it's like any other media you can actually uh, insert an ad, a paid tweet, so you get paid to tweet. I know like uh, Ashton Kutcher probably would get you know, $10,000 a tweet. I, I, I'm sure they would offer him at least that too yeah. uh, because you have so many followers. But you, you, so advertisers can put in a, an ad campaign and what, they set the price per tweet or price per view or something? Yeah, um, they, they basically have control over how they want to do it. So. Mm-hmm. Just as in Google's AdWords, where an advertiser can set a budget and they set how much they want to pay per click. Um, same with uh, Feeds of Birds. The advertiser just makes his, his ad campaign, puts as many Bitcoins in it as he wants. There's no minimum or maximum. And then he sets his uh, CPM, or cost per meal, which in this case is uh, the price he will pay per thousand people that see the message. Mm-hmm. So if one Twitter user has a thousand followers, um, he will tweet the message to those thousand, and he gets the full CPM figure, and it's all set by the um, by the advertiser. So basically, they can choose how uh, how much they want to incentivize people to send out their message. 
Okay. So when I'm looking, I'm looking at the site now, and how do I? Is the number up here? And, and obviously, the, the thing that's unique about this is that it's in Bitcoin. So it's not through dollars and banks and PayPal's and all that stuff. It's actually Bitcoin, so it's much more versatile. You can be in any part of the world and uh, and do this without anybody's any government or bank's permission or anything else. So is this number up in the corner of each campaign? It, it says like 0 0.0909 Bitcoin. Is that the price per thousand appearance? Uh, or is that the total budget for the campaign? You want to answer, Ira? Well, like, uh, if I'm looking at the site right now and I see, I guess these are ad campaigns, right? In blue, the number of Bitcoin in blue, what does that represent? You're on the uh, front page, right, Bruce? Yeah. Am I the and you're page? logged in? No, I didn't log in. Um, if, you, if you're not logged in, you're seeing the cost per milli. If oh. you do log in, it will count the number of followers you have mm -hmm. and calculate what you would get paid. So ah. I think in your case, you've got about 12,000 followers, so mm -hmm. you would get 12 times the cost per mil. Oh, I got you. Okay, okay. So that's the cost per mil. And then when you're logged in, it'll calculate however many based on your followers. Okay. Cool, cool. Now, I did, do, I did try this the other day. Oh, I didn't tell you, Ed, but I did. I logged in, and I took one of these, and I tweeted, and uh, I don't know what. I made like three or four bucks or something, right, for a tweet? Yeah. <laughs> that was my lunch. That was a slice of pizza. That's cool. So yeah. <laughs> um, how, how long has the site been up? So, so oh, wait a minute. First of all, Eric, you came, when did you come up with this idea? Um, about a month ago. A month ago. And then you told Ira about it right away? He, he came to mind yeah, first? Yeah, because he, him and I had worked on a couple uh, smaller projects, and so you know, we knew each other from the New York conference. So mm -hmm. um, I knew I could trust him to build something quickly and at a really high you know, level of quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the key was seeing if he, was, if he liked the idea also, and, mm -hmm. and he did. So then it just moved very, very quickly. So Ira, how long did it take for you to code this from the time he told you the idea until the time it was launched? A week and a half, two weeks of uh, development time. And, and you know, as Eric said, we're still in uh, an open beta. Mm -hmm. We actually uh, opened up last Wednesday night. Uh, mm -hmm. and so less than a week that wow. it's been, been open. Why, why did it take so long to develop it? <laughs> a week and a half, two no, weeks. No, I'm just teasing. Pretty short, yeah. actually. A week and a half. You must not have been working overtime. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So has it has uh, it had received much traction yet? I mean, has it, have has it have people been uh, entering new campaigns yet, or or am I the only one? <laughs> um, no, you're you're definitely not the only one. There have been uh, a few people that have put in campaigns. We've put in a few of our ourselves uh, to help seed it, mm -hmm. and um, we have a uh, quite a consistent number of new people joining the site every day, um, and so the. Uh, the way that the site will work is that as people tweet these messages out, uh, new people who have no idea about Bitcoin or this website will see it. Mm -hmm. uh, some fraction of them will be drawn to the site and then uh, it'll sort of grow organically. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, uh, as, of, as of right now, from last when we launched on Wednesday night, um, 200,000 beaks have been fed. Uh, we call beaks just our fun little cute word for followers. Mm -hmm. So 200,000 people have seen messages uh, retweeted from people through the site. Uh, that's 800 retweets and about 250 um, average followers per person. So, uh, so far 50 bitcoins have been paid out to the uh, people who have retweeted mm -hmm. and uh, that means at least 50 bitcoins have been paid in uh, from the advertisers. Cool, cool. Now, if I want to be an advertiser, um, I can advertise almost anything, anything acceptable, I guess. And uh, is, it's not targeted by the audience, right? Because anybody with, a, it's just by number of followers and number of tweets. It's not specially targeted to any hashtag or anything like that, right? Yeah. Um, we, we're relying on the users to target as they wish. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, people's Twitter lists are, are somewhat personal in that they, you know, they don't want to just spam them with things. So um, people will send what messages they feel comfortable sending to their own audience. And so we let our, our users basically filter out for us. Mm -hmm. um, if we see 
a sponsored ad that we think is just completely outlandish or inappropriate, we'll just delete it. Um, mm -hmm. So we we don't let just anything on the site, but for the most part, we let people pick and choose and uh, mm -hmm. distribute what they feel is good. Okay, so it's kind of self-regulating. So you pick what you're going to tweet. You're not assigned it, and it, it doesn't take over your account and automatically tweet for you on your behalf. That's an important point because right. you know you, that's that's a real uncomfortable feeling when you give some automated system access to your account and you don't know what it's going to spew into your account. But you actually have to do it manually and initiate the tweet each time, right? Yeah. Um, and there, there are services out there, uh, not for Bitcoin obviously, but for normal uh, fiat monies that will uh, let you get paid for your tweets. Um, but often they will send things automatically on a routine basis and you, you don't really have any control about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this really puts all the control both in the sponsor and in the user. Um, and when their interests meet, uh, you know the exchange will occur. Mm -hmm. And you can I put any this possible without without the bitcoins. You can put in any budget amount you want, and any um, any cost per meal, or what you call it like cost per thousand views uh, or tweets, whatever um, you want. Right? Is there any minimum? Or no, maximum? no, no minimum. But it's a competitive market, so as it builds, um, people who put in a, a small cost per meal. Uh, will end up on the second or third or fourth page, mm -hmm. and are and obviously they're not incentivizing people to to send their message out. Right. Uh, the higher the higher you pay, the more likely someone is going to send the message mm -hmm. to their followers. Mm -hmm. So it, it is competitive in that sense, mm -hmm. um, and we think that it it lets lots of different advertisers work. You know, if mm -hmm. someone has a message that they think is um, super interesting, mm -hmm. they may not need to pay much at all to have it retweeted out. Right. And people might send this out and you know just earn a couple little tiny fractions of a coin, mm -hmm. uh, and, th and that's something that you can do with Bitcoin and you can't do it with dollars. Okay. Now, I, d I noticed the tweets, do they always have to contain the hashtag feed the birds and the, and the link? Is that required part of the content of the tweet? Yeah, Ira, you want to take this one? Yeah, uh, right now we're, we're putting in probably more, more hashtags uh, to identify our campaign tweets mm -hmm. than in the long run will want to mm -hmm. uh, and that's just to to create so, so people know uh, when a tweet is ours and that they know to look at the campaign mm -hmm. and really just get used to the the format of uh, you know these these retweets rather than a, mm -hmm. a normal tweet right but I mean as an advertiser do I have to have all those hashtags in there or no are that, is it? yeah the the system adds them so the way the way that creating a campaign works uh, is you've got 77 characters mm -hmm. uh, out of the total 140 that Twitter allows you we fill in the rest uh, with you know the the URL to link to your campaign so people can check whether it's got funds uh, general hashtags labeling it as you know a retweet for Bitcoin uh, that sort of thing, uh, and then those 77 you fill in with your ad text. Your ad message, okay. Yeah, um, and cool. yeah, we call it the boilerplate, um, and so it's appended to each tweet as it goes out. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Ira said, right now uh, it's more extensive than it will be in the future. Mm -hmm. um, we'll trim it down because we realize that that with Twitter every little character is important. Mm -hmm. So um, we will be we have a few ways to trim it down a bit uh, as we progress, but for right now. Um, it's important that we explain things more clearly, so that's mm -hmm. why we're using more space with the boilerplate. Yeah. Later you can trim it down to hashtag FZB or something. <laughs> Three letters. Yeah. As long as, well, as long as there's a way for people to figure out what it is. Or a short link, you know, something that's shorter. Give, to give them more characters, that, that seems like a good yeah, idea. Yeah, if, if, really, if we really try and push it, we can probably get the boilerplate to just about half of what it is now. Mm -hmm. But there will always be a boilerplate there, and that's that's what helps kind of virally spread these out. Right. Okay. Cool. So uh, you guys who are watching live, uh, if you happen to be watching live right now, uh, you can send your questions to uh, er for Eric and Ira uh, and I to uh, email feedback at only one tv dot com, all spelled out. Feedback at only one tv dot com. Right now, live on the air, and we can answer your questions. Or you can send an SMS text message to the USA uh, number, plus one, six four six five eight zero 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 nine nine. You see it right there on the screen, six four six five eight zero 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 nine nine. If you're watching live, you can send the message right now, and we'll get it and answer it 
uh, live. If, if, you're in, if not, if you're not watching live, then send us a question. Maybe we'll try and address it on the next show. So um, let me take a break real quick now and um, thank our sponsors, uh, who we appreciate very much for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show and bringing us to you every day. And they are Mt. Gox, the uh, number one Bitcoin exchange site, the automated ex exchange site where you can buy and sell Bitcoin 24-7, completely automated, from any place on earth, from the comfort of your easy chair. Just go to mtgox.com, mtgox.com. They deal in more than 16 currencies. So it doesn't matter if you're using US dollars, euros, Canadian dollars, doesn't matter what it is, Japanese yen, you can deal directly with mtgox.com, buy Bitcoin there, you can sell Bitcoin there. Of course, it's the de facto place we look to find out what the value of a Bitcoin is today. They have uh, super sophisticated security with, uh, they call it two-factor authentication with this thing called a YubiKey. It's a tiny little USB dongle you plug into your computer and it gives you a password good for two seconds. So very, very secure. Uh, check it out, mountgox.com. Thanks for sponsoring the Bitcoin Show. And the Thank You Economy by uh, New York Times bestselling author Gary Vaynerchuk, otherwise known on Twitter as Gary V. He's a, a serial entrepreneur, very famous in the, the world of social media and tw speaking of Twitter and uh, Twitter, Facebook and all that. And this book is his second um, uh, book and it's about, it's basically the Bible on how to use social media, Web 2.0, all these new technologies to bring your business back to an era of personal hand-holding customer service, um, like the good old days. And it's scalable, so it doesn't matter if your business is small or medium-sized or large, um, how to do social media right. Um, everybody knows the value of social media, and uh, they know they should be using Twitter to help their business, but 99% does it wrong. They just don't know what they're doing. So read this book. This really is the Bible on that. Uh, it's called, you can go to thankyoeconomybook.com and check it out. And memorydealers.com, our, our buddy... Uh, Roger Ver is the founder of MemoryDealers.com. I call him Bitcoin Jesus. He's a huge Bitcoin evangelist. Yeah, I'm sure you know of him. MemoryDealers.com is famous for also for having um, the largest inventory of fiber optic uh, network devices, uh, routers, switches, cables, um, mining gear, all types of memory and peripherals you can imagine. So check it out, MemoryDealers.com. Thanks, uh, thanks, Roger Ver, for supporting us. So, Ro Roger's also got a, an ad on uh, Feeds of Birds, so if you want to tweet that and get some money. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He's got an ad on there already. Perfect. See, it's, everybody supports everybody. I love that. That's great. I didn't see that. So he's got, a, he's got one on there already. Very cool. Oh, there it is. The very second one. Roger Ver's fantastic Bitcoin interview, Libertarian News. Yeah, that's right. He was interviewed on the, on the, the uh, radio network that he buys ads on. So, um, Actually, I'm not sure if that one is, is placed by him, but that's about him. But he had one for uh, the, the physical Kasaskias coins that he's selling oh. on his site for the um, oh, for credit right. card. So that one might have run out of funds now. Oh, but, okay. It's yeah. ever-changing. Cool, cool. Ever-changing. So the, um, do you think that this has a potential of becoming a, a, a huge thing? Um, well, we have a maximum user base of a few hundred million people. <laughs> But of course, we're limited to the number of people who understand and use Bitcoin. And Twitter. So uh, we see it as, um, in the near term, it's only going to be useful for people who already understand what a Bitcoin is and enjoy using them and spending them. Mm -hmm. um, but we're hope hopeful that as these campaigns are tweeted around, uh, you know, some fraction of people will be curious. And if they see mm -hmm. the Bitcoin word around, you know, they'll, they'll click on the link and they'll see that they can earn these things if they mm -hmm. uh, retweet. And that might help drive... Uh, a little bit of Bitcoin adoption, yeah. um, you know, it, them being able to see uh, this thing that they can do with Bitcoin that they can't do with normal dollars. Mm -hmm. well, I can see also um, people l wanting to learn about it because of their location. For example, you know, we have a, a virtual, not virtual, <laughs> Ed always calls him a virtual employee, but he's actually a real employee, he have a remote employee who lives in uh, Namigan, Uzbekistan. So if you live in Uzbekistan or you know, somewhere Tanzania or something um, where there's a difficulty with banking or currency or you know, like there, there's, you know, cur the only currency that's legally allowed to be used is the Uzbek Som. So um, there could be issues like that. It's difficult to earn money 
um, on the internet, if you have access to the internet, all you need is an unlimited internet account, and you can um, sit there and create a Twitter account, create a Twitter following, you know, uh, be a Twitter journalist or whatever it is. And you know, like there's there's a lot of people who've done that. There was there's one called uh, what was that one called uh, something like. Uh, Young Geek or something, YoungNerdGeek.com or something like that. Anyway, it just it, somebody in Asia who just you know created this microblogging empire really just by being a Twitter journalist. And if you build a big following, you could actually do this. You could actually take these ads and um, you know tweet them. And it's it's fair fair game in that you are labeling them as paid. So. Their following knows that they're they're paid, so there's nothing misleading about it. It's uh, full disclosure. They are getting paid for that. But, but so what? You know, everything has ads. You know, they're not paying to read the the quality content. So anyway, the point is, you can make a business out of this. And in countries, especially in countries where there are banking or currency issues, and it's hard to make a get a job anywhere else. Yeah, in uh, in Nigeria, there's a, a company called NairaTweets.net. Uh, and Nigerians can tweet uh, their sponsored messages. Um, so in a, in a way, it's a little similar to, to Feeds of Birds, but um, mm -hmm. because of all the, you know, all the problems with normal currencies, this, this company has to pay out with like reward points and prizes from the website, uh, and still they have like tens of thousands of people using their system only wow. to earn some of these rewards from the site. Um, so clearly people you know, enjoy having access to a way to sponsor their own content, uh, whether it's an advertisement on their own mm -hmm. blog, which lets them earn money from the content they put out, yeah. or an advertisement in their tweets that lets them put, earn money from the content that they put out through that channel. Um, Bitcoin really allows it to work a lot more smoothly. Yeah, in, circ in other countries like that, circumstances are very different than they are here. They, they may have uh, cell phones with unlimited SMS, and they can use Twitter that way, and they have un, you know all the time in the world. But they may or may not have internet or sketchy internet or their their currency. What, what's the name of the site you just mentioned in Nigeria? It's Naira Tweet, uh, N A I R A Tweets dot net. N A I R A Tweets dot net. We'll put that in the in the show notes so that people searching for that will also find this show and find out about uh, feeds of birds because they can. I mean, that's the thing. It doesn't matter if you're in Nigeria or Uzbekistan. You can set up a Bitcoin account. You can go to mountgox.com. In fact, I'm going to do a little how-to video, how to, how to buy and use Bitcoin you know, 2.0, <laughs> which basically means set up a Mt. Gox account and use that as your wallet for now until you know, the next generation will be these new apps. But anyway, it, if you go to mountgox.com and create a new account, you're done. You have a Bitcoin wallet that's online and, and secure. So it doesn't matter or where you are. Cinch. BT Cinch is another BT good Cinch, one. of course, of course. BT Cinch too. <laughs> I know there's so many now, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, there, there, so anyway, it just takes two seconds. You set up with a Bitcoin account, and on these sites like BT Cinch and Mt. Gox, they can convert them to the currency of their choice when and you know if and when they need to, without a whole a whole lot of uh, you know banking pain involved. So um, they can. It seems like a really good. You might get most of your uh, audience, like most of your tweeters could come from these, you know, second and third world countries <laughs> and, and marketers can be from anywhere. To, uh, another interesting feature, I, I think that this site, uh, you're absolutely right, we might get people from second, uh, all, all sorts of countries uh, around the world. Uh, you also actually don't need to have a, a wallet set up to use Feeds of Birds for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's plugged in to BT Cinch, it uses it for, for payouts and also to uh, fun right. campaigns, you can actually get paid out via an email address. That's uh, right, so I forgot. You know, if you stumble on this from Twitter uh, and just are, are curious about it and uh, you know, sign in with your Twitter account and enter your email address, you can retweet without ever and get paid without ever first learning you know, what a Bitcoin address is, mm -hmm. uh, how the transactions work. Yeah. And then you've got some in your account. It's like, you know, I gave you a quarter. Uh, now you are motivated to learn what a quarter is. What can I do with it? Right, exactly. That's right. I forgot. Because I, I did test this out with you the other day. I and I noticed because it says uh, no account on file and you can click change. 
and then it says enter your Bitcoin address or your email address, which is brilliant because, of course, if they don't know what a Bitcoin address is, then they do know what an email address is. So I put in my email address, and then, of course, BT Cinch sends me an email saying you have Bitcoin. So it just sends it out through BT Cinch, right? Yep. Yeah. It, so it's integrated it? with that, which is great because that helps promote BT Cinch as well. And that's so, so easy because you just follow the link and boom, now it's in your BT Cinch account and you can do with it what you may. That's very, very clever. And now I can, yeah. now, uh, is there a way to redeem it directly for munchies? <laughs> well, I, you know, that's, that's the beautiful thing about money. Once it's uh, in your account, you can spend it on whatever you want. Uh, you can, you know, go to uh, Bit Munchies and, and buy yourself some popcorn or whatever you like. Directly from BT Singe. Dan, yeah. do I get a discount if I use BT Singe Bitcoins as opposed to generic Bitcoins? <laughs> <laughs> we're, at, we're actually working on... Uh, a <laughs> ten uh, percent discount for people who check out with BT Cinch funds versus. Oh, there you go, there you go. So, yep, they can tweet for Fritos in Nigeria or where. <laughs> yeah, hey, Bruce, to um to give you a little idea of how popular this is, just in a country like Nigeria, the site uh, Naira Tweets has five hundred and eighty thousand Twitter users um, signed up with them. Five hundred eighty thousand so, Twitter users. Five hundred eighty thousand in in Nigeria using Twitter using this service. So Wow. Oh, and I, mean, I would that's what I want to ask you. You said they don't pay in money, they pay in prizes or something? What kind of prizes yeah. do they give you? You sort of earn like um you earn like credits with their store and then you can swap it out for some prizes or um it's it's kind of confusing. Are they listing I mean, they, the names of the twi tweeters? Are they are there Twitter handles there? Yeah, if you go to the site, it shows there's a little uh, a little roll on the bottom that has some of their recent people, and you can go and... Okay. So I'm going to give you an idea, Eric, and then you can give it to Ira, and in a week and a half, he can have it done. Um, you, need to, you need to suck in all those Twitter handles into your database, and then spew out, one by one, uh, a welcoming message, an at reply to those tweeters, and say, if you like this site, try Feeds the Birds. Because we pay actual money. <laughs> <laughs> the the largest obstacle, obviously, is just people who have no idea what a Bitcoin is. So mm -hmm. we will at all times be limited by um, the extent of the Bitcoin marketplace. But hopefully, yeah. we can help push that uh, out further. Yeah. Well, and I, as it grows, we'll benefit. I, I think the way that the system is set up is really ideal for people getting their first Bitcoin. Uh, you know, all you need is a Twitter account, an email address, and mm -hmm. you've got your, your first Bitcoin or yeah. however much. Um, but it, you know, it, it allows people to get their hands on it with no technical knowledge. Right. Well, the barrier of entry, you've just dropped it away completely. So it's just basically it cost them nothing to try it. The, the thing is that once they try it, they have to be able to get that converted into something that they can spend for food or something. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's actually a good question. So if I'm in Nigeria and I, I tweet full time for a living, which really that is enough for uh, possibly for a living over there. If, if you're tweeting for a living in Nigeria and you're getting paid in Bitcoin in my BT Cinch, how hard or easy is it going to be for a Nigerian to get Nigerian money from Bitcoin? That's, that's, a ca that's an obstacle well, right the, there. The first smart Nigerian will set up an exchange in Nigeria. There you go. Uh, the BT Cinch needs a branch there. You need What's to open that? a branch. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, we, we, we uh, use exchanges as middlemen. So I guess, you know, crypto exchange needs a, needs a branch there. Yeah, <laughs> the other guys do. Somebody, anybody, just as long as there's some... Actually, any, uh, any entrepreneur in Nigeria who's watching this, set up an exchange site. You've got 100,000 people who, want, who could use it. Actually, I think crypto exchange can already... Uh, send out withdrawals in Nigerian currency to a Nigerian bank. They do? Are you serious? I thought you were kidding. No, crypto exchange can send out over 120 currencies to basically oh. any country that doesn't have a U.S. embargo. Wow. So, sorry, North Korea, but uh, <laughs> almost every other country uh, crypto exchange can send out to. So I don't know if the Nigerian currency is included in that 120, but it may well be. And wow. in that case... Uh, someone in Nigeria who had accumulated some of these bitcoins with the tweets mm -hmm. could absolutely sell them for uh, for dollars and then withdraw as Nigerian currency to their Nigerian bank. So maybe the Nigerian exchange is already obsolete. 
So this is a question for uh, for crypto exchange, I guess, for Ken over there. But the uh, which you're involved in that too, Eric, right? You're in, you're involved with uh, crypto exchange. Yes, yeah, definitely. I'm, that's why you know so much about it, of course. Yes. So, um, so I did crypto <laughs> about a month ago. Okay. So um, they send it to these other countries. At what as a bank wire to that bank in that country? Is that how it works? Uh, it's not technically a bank wire, but it, it goes to their bank. So you can think of it like a bank wire. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's, and then, there's a fifteen dollar fee to do any withdrawal to any bank, and that replaces the um, the wire fee or EFT fees, that kind of thing. Mm, okay. So they, do they have to have an account at that bank, or they can just walk in with ID and and retrieve that the funds? Whatever. If they if if the Nigerian has a normal Nigerian bank account, um, we, it's likely that crypto exchange can send Nigerian currency to that bank. Directly to that. If, it, if it's one of the 120 currencies that we mm -hmm. that we have supported right now, okay, which I'm not sure of. Okay, you hear that, everybody in Nigeria? Now you don't have to do those spam fraud emails anymore. <laughs> you switch <laughs> over to switch over to tweet marketing. Uh, you probably we make also more need money to get anyway. in contact with uh, Kim Kardashian because she's she's kind of like the biggest tweeter in the universe in terms yeah. of what she can pull in. Yeah. So if anyone out there knows her personally, uh, we'd yes. love to you know have her as a spokesperson or something. Okay. But she. She makes probably like I don't know twenty grand on a on a tweet. Wow! Um, so if you, go to, uh, if you go to check out this one. We we need to have a, a really big campaign in order to you know to to appeal to her though, because we're we reach a, a few million people though. That's yeah, so actually you're right. It would have we just have to have a big budget for a campaign. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> one tweet would wipe it out unless you got that much in there. So um, okay, Roger Ver, memory dealers. You have to put it. Put a hundred thousand dollar campaign in there, and then, <laughs> and then we'll get uh, Ms. Kardashian to uh, one tweet. Boom, it's done. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure her. I'm not sure her followers are our main target market right now, but certainly that would boost the business. Um, if you go to sponsoredtweets.com, mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of the biggest people in this field, and uh, they have a lot of the celebrities that send out these mm. sponsored tweets, and um, these people have you know. 10 million followers and they pull in five figures for a, a single tweet. Wow. So <laughs> there's definitely money in it. Amazing. And, uh, Sponsoredtweets.com. Okay, cool. Sponsoredtweets.com. Yeah. You know, but of course, everything that, that that site does is is held back by having to stick with, with dollars and bank accounts and they're limited to the U.S. Yeah. So, you know, as well as they've done with getting celebrities on board, they're always going to be stuck in a dollar world and um, we'll, we'll see if they wake up mm -hmm. and realize that no. Yeah, this, the internet is a global network, and so is Bitcoin. If they go hand in hand, I mean, I knew, when I first heard this, I knew it was a good idea, but it's actually a much better idea than I realized because of all, the, all these things, like you say, the the banking, PayPal, all that. You know, those networks are so antiquated and limited and regulated and expensive. This is so much better. Completely yeah, I, independent of where you, you are. If you go to, if you look at sponsored tweets, I, I believe they also use a kind of point system. Uh, where you you buy points uh, or are paid in points uh, for for tweeting uh, and I, I'm not sure how it works specifically with the the celebrities, but I, I think the really the reason why all these places are using point systems is because they can't manage the funds in a uh, a scalable enough uh, increment. Oh. And so really, what what's allowing us to do this? Then the, the Characteristic of Bitcoin that allows us to do this is is micro payments. Mm -hmm. so you can get paid out, you know, at, at for four followers, yeah. uh, and it, it really opens this possibility of getting paid for retweets up to people mm -hmm. who have a normal, you know, average kind of Twitter account mm -hmm. uh, at, versus somebody who's got millions and can get paid in you know yeah. whole dollars for right. a a campaign. Yeah, if you have two hundred Twitter followers, I don't think you can get paid through some of these main. Um, that makes sense too, websites. for but, the uh, average everyday person like Eric, who only has 100 followers. You, <laughs> you can actually get paid because, yeah, I mean, I, it makes sense because the nature of Bitcoin, the eight decimal places, um, which, which you know, if you got one ten thousandth of a of a penny or whatever, <laughs> it's not going to be able to pay you anything. You're going to have to do quite a bit, but but you can actually get one ten thousandth of a Bitcoin and send it to you, and you receive it. <laughs> Yeah, we, we currently have a minimum withdrawal of a uh, 0.01 Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So, a bit uh, as long as you can get to one bit penny or a bit <laughs> cent, 
then you, you can withdraw. But there, there's no uh, technological barrier yeah. to, to making it, you know, one right. single millionth of a Bitcoin or something. It's just a to. transaction fee issue. Well, you could, yeah, you could, go, you could go further with that if you wanted to. If I ever yeah. put a little bit more time into it. You know, but a bitch cent will go a long way in Nigeria. You know, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know, you can, you can eat a meal, you know, probably for, what, a couple of bit cent for, you know, for real. I mean, people can really live on very little. They live a simple life and, you know, that money goes a long way in a country like that. So, um, yeah, well, something, something as revolutionary as Bitcoin is going to create lots of, uh, lots of wealth in interesting places mm -hmm. that we normally see it. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, you, you could expect something like, you know, some, some rural Nigerian who, who just has a, a little netbook and something figuring out how to earn, you know, a huge amount of money. Um, the, I can see he'll, have, he'll, he'll be the guy who runs the exchange over there and he'll have like sweatshops with everybody running on a, a little $99 netbooks just tweeting, <laughs> tweeting, 24 hours a day tweeting, you know. Can, just like the, the Chinese uh, World of Warcraft gold factories, right? right? <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, you said a, a bit sense is actually, you know, uh, can, can be a lot. You know, I, I was at first struck me a little odd, but you think about it, you know, there, what did you say, Eric? 400 million users on Twitter? Uh, it? It's like, it's between two and 400 million, I believe. Well, I mean, let's, let's go with three. 300 million users. Mm -hmm. If each one of them gets one bit cent, uh, that's three million bitcoins that are now part held by this Twitter Bitcoin consortium. Mm -hmm. So the the potential to affect Bitcoin prices and, and demand is actually huge, just because of the the size of these markets. That mm -hmm. even with with micro payments, uh, it can have a real impact. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. even if you have, um, <laughs> I mean, you know, like. Um, you know, in some of these countries, you can get dinner f for 20 cents, you know, U.S. So that would be, uh, what would that be, 10 uh, or, or whatever, eight, <laughs> five eight, bit cents or something? Eight bitcoins. Something like, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the, every bitcoin holder, no matter how small their account, is another bitcoin user, which has, uh, you know, it, it, who contributes to the bitcoin community in ways... I mean, maybe not financially as much, but um, in other ways, because every user is a beta tester, every user has you know, feedback, and, and uh, also is uh, a person who is potential of word of mouth and spreading the word. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to having more users of Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. And the more they understand it, just one more person who understands how this works, even if it's a thousandth of a Bitcoin or, or one bit cent, if when, when they understand it, they're like, wow, if I can send a bit cent, then I can send a Bitcoin. If I can send a Bitcoin, I can send a hundred Bitcoin. And like, and there's still no fee. I mean, you know, the, the, once they get it, it'll spread like wildfire. More evangelists yeah. are born. And, and someone, <laughs> someone in some rural place with a few thousand Twitter followers, uh, they could very easily pay for their dinner by sending a tweet out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and, um, this can be very much be in the the interest of the sponsor. You know, if if he's trying to target some certain group, um, this is very ben beneficial for all the parties. At yeah. some point on our site, we're going to need to categorize more by location and and type. Um, so there will be some segmentation eventually, mm -hmm. uh, but for right now, it's just kind of all on the on the homepage. Yeah, like if somebody in China has you know a million followers, but they're all Chinese and they they read Chinese, you know, but. You know, yeah, but anyway, for now, it's still good. The, the idea that, um, well, if they're in English, that's pretty much the universal language for the most part. But um, what was I going to say? Um, just the idea that people, people work hard on their Twitter accounts. They tweet, some, some people take the time, like I try to, to say something profound, something really interesting and educational, and, and I, I do it in a spirit of sharing, you know. This, this is really good information, and I want to share it with the world, you know, kind of, in that way. And so if you put energy and thought and intention behind what you're tweeting, it's not just a machine to make money. Um, of course, I I've never done sponsored tweets, so it's definitely not about money. But, um, but yeah, like I have 12 and a half thousand followers or something like that. So um, it's, I think it's absolutely fair and justified to, you know, capitalize on that, to do a sponsored tweet once in a while. Your audience, as long as they know, you know, that's what it is, it's, there's nothing misleading. You don't want to 
do an ad and then make it seem like it's not. As long as it's full disclosure, this is a sponsored yep. tweet. That's important to me. But if, as long as it's full disclosure, it's sponsored, then hey, that's, that's the price of getting the good content. And it's, um, it's a naturally balancing mechanism. So you're right, people do work and spend time and effort to build up their follower list. It's, it's something of value to have these followers. Right. Uh, and someone who damages that um, privilege by spamming them with sponsored ads uh, can only do that in the short term and people will start, you know, because it's, it's very easy to leave and not follow someone anymore. Right, so, yeah. Um, I think with our site, probably a lot of people worry about spam and issues like that, but if you think about the, the, um, the incentive structure and how people will respond to someone who's spamming, those people will tend to lose followers. Yeah. Uh, so there's, a, there's always going to be a careful balance that the user of the, that the Twitter guy has to, uh, to take care of. Exactly. And you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to do too many, too often. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I love the fact that um, on Feeds of Birds, it's done manually. So I have full control over exactly what I tweet and how often and, and when and all that. So yep. um, I don't really like the automated systems where it's going to tweet automatically every few hours. I think Twitter, my, my followers would really not appreciate that, especially if they have it set up to notify their phone and their phone actually like rings. You know, some people do. I mean, literally, I tweet something and they reply right away, always because I, you know, they have Twitter notifications on and they don't follow very many people. So literally, when I tweet something, their phone rings. You know, and that you have to respect that. You know, I yeah. mean, there are people like that. You know, that don't follow. They just follow a few key people and they have notifications on. When somebody sends me, um, you know, a, an email or an at reply, I'll get a notification. I but. Anyway, the point is that some people do. They really, really care about what you say enough to have notifications on. So if they get notified of something that's a sponsored tweet um, too frequently, they are going to unfollow you for sure mm -hmm. because you, you, can't, you don't want to annoy them. Yeah, and, and also you don't just, it's not just a question of whether you tweet a message or not, but you can choose which ones you tweet. That's right. So yeah. some, of them will be, some of them will be relevant for a certain audience but inappropriate for another. And right. people can, uh, can choose to pick the ones that are relevant for their audience. Exactly. That's another thing I like about Feeds of Birds because I can go there. If it's a, if it's a message about like Roger Ver's you know, Bitcoin interview, that's something I would tweet anyway. Right. So I may as well get paid for it. <laughs> so if it's right. something about Bitcoin or about Ubuntu Linux or free open source software or Android or one of the many things that I do tweet about all the time, my followers already know that I tweet about these topics. Uh, and they follow me because I tweet about these topics, especially if I can find something in there that I would probably tweet about anyway, that's perfect mm -hmm. because then it's, it just goes right in with what I would do. And there's also a, a very blurry line between just content and, uh, and an advertisement because I've used, I've used this own system uh, to send out like an article that I thought was interesting. And so I'll pay you know, a few bit cents to, to place this on our site. And I'm not expecting any return from that, but it's something that I want other people to see. So I can put it on the site, I can set a low CPM number, and if other people find it interesting, they earn a little bit, and um, it, it helps the message get out to thousands of people. Mm -hmm. So if you think about, like, you know, a charity could do this very well, uh, and they can send out a message that they, they thought was important. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a uh, method on the site to show the funding address for that campaign. Mm. Uh, publicly, so people who see the campaign can see the address that they can fund it with, and that means that people can people who see the tweet can visit that and say, "Oh, I support this message too. Let me donate uh, a coin to the cause," and then that all goes into the pool and continues to uh, distribute it out. Oh, you mean it displays the Bitcoin address of the campaign? If you want, it's a it's an option. It's okay. just a checkbox say display the uh, the address publicly, and then yeah. anyone can can pay in to keep funding the campaign. Speaking of charities, I mean, um, do you have any ability to, like, what if somebody puts a sponsored tweet on there that says, um, you know, donate to uh, the Red Cross or something, and it's, it's not the Red Cross? Do you, that's, you look for that, right? If it's a charity, you're going to have to ver do some verification and make sure it's really the, representing the real charity, right? Well, if someone, if someone puts an ad that we clearly see as fraud, we'll take it off. Mm -hmm. But people always need to take responsibility for their own actions on the internet. So mm -hmm. if you if you see a tweet that says "Donate here to the Red Cross" and you click it, and it takes you to some uh, Ukrainian URL <laughs> asking for your money, uh, yeah. First yeah, of all, that's a troll, and second, <laughs> yeah, don't tweet that. Um, <laughs> you know, bet, bet these things yourself. Always be careful of what you do. 
And uh, you know, if you see a Red Cross thing, in all cases beyond just our site, you need to take Red care. Red Cross dot f r o d dot r u. Then probably that's not the right one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we we encourage uh, because we're using Twitter uh, as as our kind of publishing platform. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you find spam you know related to any of our accounts or anything like that, uh, report it to Twitter as well. Uh, you know, tell us and and we'll do what we can from our, to remove it from our system. Mm -hmm. But if you tell Twitter, then Twitter will also uh, do what they can to uh, yeah. flag mm -hmm. that user. Right. Yeah. Right. And the advertiser also has to look clearly at the message and make sure that it's a rep it's a message message that they can stand behind, at least. Right. We yeah. we uh, in our in our terms of use we have a, a little clause there that says basically if we find a, an account that's clearly spam, and this is purely according to our judgment, um, we will simply cancel the account and we'll we'll donate the the funds that have been deposited to to a charity or perhaps to the other sponsors or, or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so that so what that does is it introduces risk for anyone who wants to rip people off. Mm -hmm. um, to fund the account on our site, they have to donate bitcoins. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's their risk. If they do that and we catch them, they lose their money. So we think that that is is another natural way that uh, will mm -hmm. act as a disincentive for people to uh, to mm. put that stuff out. Mm, that's good. That's smart. Have you had any negative kickback from any or feedback from anybody that 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 just is opposed to? To anybody doing any kind of commercial advertising on Twitter, yeah, there there's always people that are opposed to to anything that has to do with profit, business, and advertising, and any any system that forwards those initiatives will have uh, critics. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure we can do much about them. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who think that you know Twitter is sacred and there should never be any uh, advertisements. Um, <laughs> They they fail to see the purpose of an advertisement in society. You know, it's not this evil plague that you have to deal with all the time. Advertisements are ways for people to get their messages out, and when you can monetize the content that you're putting out through Twitter, uh, it encourages you to put out better content to grow your Twitter list because suddenly it's worth more. So, yeah. well, well, on the surface, you know, we're all kind of annoyed at ads and stuff. Um, there's actually a very important purpose that they serve, and as long as people aren't abusing that. Um, people shouldn't, you know, have a serious problem with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as, as long as I always feel like, as long as it's clearly identified as an advertisement, you know, one one thing that bothers me, uh, one of my pet peeves is these, you know, the search engines. I forgot whether it was Bing or Google or one of them the other day, but I was looking at it and I was going, you know, how they have the sponsored links at the top, and they have them like in red or pink or something. I'm like, is that pink getting fainter and fainter and fainter? <laughs> I have to like yeah. close the blinds and turn off the lights to tell. Is that white or pink? They're, it's almost like they're trying to make it blend in so you really can't tell which ones are sponsored and which ones aren't. And that bothers me. I think it should be clearly labeled advertisement. You know, And that's cool. I mean, if I want to click it, it's relevant, I'll click it. But I don't like it when advertising is disguised as content. I, that, that's one of my real pet peeves. But as long as it's full disclosure, I'm getting paid to tell you this message. You feel free to skip it. You know, um, then I think it's fair game. And the best content out there on any kind of media um, is monetized. Of course, it has it has sponsorship because you know the best content is uh, has value. And why shouldn't the people who create it get rewarded financially? I mean, that's what capitalism is about. So um, yeah. And 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 some people there there is value in seeing an ad that is relevant to you. Right. There's value in knowing about a service that you didn't know about or a product that you might want. Mm -hmm. So people with Twitter accounts who send out these advertisements, the ones who do it effectively, will actually be sending information to their followers who who may want that information. Yeah. So the responsibility lies with the person who controls their own follower list, and if they abuse that privilege, their followers will tend to leave. Exactly. That's that's what I was saying. What I would do is. I'll, I'll be watching to see if I if I find things on there that I would probably tweet anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and tweet them, and uh, you know why not? You know, if you you know why not get paid? <laughs> yep. Who says there's no such thing as a free lunch? It's possible. It could be a win-win. <laughs> so uh, yep. well, thank you guys so much. I, I bravo. I'm, I'm really congratulations on another smart venture uh, for both of you involved in so many projects. They all overlap. I was saying it's this Bitcoin world is kind of this incestuous world where everybody gets involved in so many different things, but it's all good. It's so exciting. Thanks. Really appreciate being here. Sure. Thanks for having us, Bruce. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for joining us. All and, right. See uh, ya.
thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you same time tomorrow. Ciao.